Just because you can sue someone doesn't always mean that you should. My name is Brandon Robertson and I'm an employment lawyer. For the context of this video, I'm gonna presume two things. Number one, that you have a good case. And by that I mean your employer has done something illegal like wrongful termination, sexual harassment, retaliation for complaining about an unsafe work environment, things like that. Number two, I'm gonna presume that a good lawyer is willing to take your case. With that out of the way, let's get to it. In general, there are four things that you should think about when considering whether or not you should file a lawsuit against your employer. Number one, you should consider filing a lawsuit if the harm done to you involves a significant loss of money. Here's how I like to think about it. Let's say you have a $70,000 car parked in your driveway. Somebody steals it, a couple hours later, the cops pull them over and arrest them. Well, everyone thinks that you should get your car back, right? Similarly, let's say you're working a job making $70,000 a year, then your employer does something illegal and fires you. Well, you're not making $70,000 a year anymore. You've been deprived of that illegally. Well, since the entire point of having a job is to earn money, if somebody illegally deprives you of that, filing a lawsuit might be a very good option. Now, filing a lawsuit doesn't make much sense if you've only lost a little bit of money. Here's how I like to think about it. If you were making $70,000 a year and then you're fired illegally, and then you get a new job just a couple days later making $80,000 a year, well, you were only out of work for a couple of days and then you covered all of your damages by getting a job that pays more. It doesn't make any sense to file a lawsuit because the amount of money at issue simply doesn't, just doesn't pencil out for anybody. The costs will quickly overwhelm the value of the case. There are other forms that are more appropriate for small amounts of money, like the Labor Board or the Department of Fair Employment and Housing if you're in California, or the EEOC or even Small Claims Court. Number two, you need to decide if helping other people is important to you or not. The reality is, is that private lawsuits from individuals just like you deter companies from doing bad things to other employees. So, especially in morally repugnant cases like blatant racism, sexual harassment, or pregnancy discrimination, companies are terrified of getting sued again. Or if they hear about other companies in their local city or town getting sued for these offenses, they work extra hard to treat their employees with dignity and respect. The reality is, is that without private lawsuits from individuals just like you, workplaces across the country and in California would not be as safe or as healthy. A good example of this is California Health and Safety Code 1278.5. This law says that it's unlawful for a healthcare organization to retaliate against an employee for voicing concerns over patient safety. So doctors, nurses, and other healthcare providers, if they complain about something that they think is unsafe for patients, they're protected under this whistleblower statute. Now this doesn't just protect the employees, obviously it gives the healthcare organization a massive incentive to pay attention to patient safety. Third, you should think about filing a lawsuit if you've suffered significant emotional harm as a result of the unlawful activity. California, as well as other states, allow employees in certain types of cases to recover emotional distress damages, also known as pain and suffering damages, in employment lawsuits. Why am I talking about this? Because this is one of the most significant components of the majority of our cases. Our clients suffer extraordinary emotional distress as a result of what happened at work. But this isn't something that you can fake. It's not like you can fake your way to millions of dollars by claiming you're upset when you're really not. You're gonna be examined by really competent experts, by lawyers. You're gonna be put in front of a jury and a judge and be examined in a way that it's impossible for you to BS your way to money. It doesn't work like that, so don't even try. But if you are legitimately traumatized by what happened to you at work, you're probably gonna have to go to therapy, see psychologists, psychiatrists to try to deal with these issues. And then hopefully, 
your lawyer will be able to prove that there's a significant monetary value to those damages. However, you need to understand that your lawsuit is gonna be extremely stressful. You're gonna to have to relive what happened to you over and over again, and you're going to be questioned on all aspects of your life. So before you go out and file a lawsuit saying that you're emotionally traumatized, think about whether or not you have the stomach and the wherewithal and the grit to persevere to the end. If you have a good lawyer, they will help you every step of the way, but just be warned, the lawsuit itself is very traumatizing. Number four, you should only bring a lawsuit if you're willing to play the legal game. Look, the justice system is far more concerned with what you can prove versus what is true. And this is a massive mental hurdle for most of our clients. They stay fixated on things that are not very important and the lawyer knows you're never gonna be able to prove. And then they're perplexed why their lawyers are focused on things that don't seem relevant to them. Look, follow your lawyer's lead. Trust in the system because if you hire a good lawyer to begin with, they're going to lead you to a successful resolution. Next, you should only file a case if you're an honest person. Now I know it might seem a little bit weird saying that you should only file a case if you're an honest person because everybody thinks that they're an honest person. But if you're being genuine with yourself and you told some lies, you fibbed a little bit, you exaggerated the numbers, look, your life is gonna get miserable in a lawsuit because at worst, you're gonna be in trouble for perjury when you lie under oath. So don't even start a case if you know that you have a tendency to be uh, less than truthful. Next, do not file a case if you're not gonna be patient. The legal system is slow, and I'm not gonna even get into why that is. But if you think that you're gonna speed up the case because you're a proactive person, you're wrong. The legal system takes a long period of time and your lawyers only have a tiny amount of control over that. So don't hammer your lawyers for the case taking a long time. Don't call them once every other day. That's a waste of everybody's time. Just let the system work, trust your lawyer, and be patient. We should talk for a second about your lawyer. Do not file a case, and I repeat, do not file a case unless you have confidence in your lawyer. This is so important. At the start of the case, everything is easy. Six months in, everything is hard. So if you don't trust your lawyer at the beginning of the case, what do you think is gonna happen when things get difficult? Look, it's simple. If you don't trust your lawyer at the start of the case, go get a different lawyer. Next, you should only pursue a claim, and this is really important, if you believe in your cause. If you're not outraged about what happened to you, then you're not going to win. If you're relatively apathetic about what happened to you, don't pursue the claim to begin with because success in these difficult, difficult lawsuits is predicated upon what you say to the jury. And if the jury thinks that you don't care, they're certainly not gonna let you win. Oh man, I'm tired of talking. If you appreciated this video, please give it a thumbs up. Now, I really wanna hear what the YouTube community thinks of this subject. If something illegal happened to you at work, would you file a lawsuit, assuming that all these boxes were checked? I'd like to know, so let me know in the comments section. Uh, finally, if you want to see more videos like this from me in the future, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That will help YouTube know that what I'm doing is valuable, okay? Let's finish up. The point of me making this video is to help you decide whether or not you're going to pursue a case or not pursue a case. Uh, the beautiful thing is that this is your choice. If you decide to pursue a case, good for you. If you decide not to pursue a case, good for you. I'm going to go erase the whiteboard and I will see you at the next video. Take care.